my head straight to do crown molding because <laughs> this is not paint grade this is pre-painted crown molding and we got some fun angles here we got to deal with I have to deal with um, it'll be fine just take my time I really like how this backsplash came out I'm really enjoying how the colors have co-mingled the floor is less apparent now that the grout has been done you know what I mean the, the dark lines just break it up it's more fluid maybe that's the word I'm looking for it's more of a fluid color that is sanded pewter and in the backsplash I did non sanded pewter I have to do one final clean on this backsplash so many little teeny grout lines and uh, this glass tile here you got a little schmutz right there I gotta clean I gotta come through and uh, like I said give it a, just a, a final polish because this is not these are not square so it's kind of weird I kept looking at it going man I messed up the grout lines but then these are wavy glass everything with purple is wavy glass the grays the black and the stainless steel are nice and square but the purple See, then you got stuff like this. That right there that I need to. So, that's what I'm going to do. Got little schmutzes like this that were just getting really difficult to get off. So I just kind of let it be. For then, it was the end of the day, I was tired. But what I'll do is basically start in this corner and I'll just work my way around, put my headphones in, relax. I got to inspect every tile and make sure I've got them all cleaned up and all my grout lines are straight. It's not a physically challenging job, it's just more of a, I want to keep my interest in this mentally job. But I'm really, really happy with how everything's coming out. So that's it, I just thought I'd do a quick update. This is the only end grain that I left showing on the toe kick when I did the toe kick. I just, I have touch up paint for that. So I'll touch that up. This angle here, I was able to get super tight I'm real happy with how that came out. Nice. All that toe kick. Oh, ice maker's kicking in. All the, uh, yeah, all the toe kicks, everything fit. Everything fit just dandy. All right. I'm going to need to work here. And uh, I'll bring you back at the end of the day when this crown will, well, in a couple hours when this crown molding's done. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are this Saturday morning. Firewall separation's all done. We're good for that one. Let's take a look at the kitchen. The kitchen. We can call the kitchen done. This is how we came out. I'm meeting the electrician here shortly. He's going to come in next week and set all the plugs. The appliances are all fired up. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. Pretty good flame. Stop. What do we do? Oh, I see. You just put it on light. Okay, never mind. Pretty decent flame. Looks like we have a pretty good gas source. If you guys really care. Fridge. Yep. Freezer. Yep. Dishwasher. Turn the breaker. I'm gonna shut the breaker off. Let me see. Yeah, breaker's off. There we go. Dishwasher is run. 
ran a cycle on it yesterday. Make sure we don't have leaks. I get to tie up all these tie up all these cables and hoses today. I decided not to yesterday because I was uh, at the end of my day. Let me show you a couple secrets that I forgot when I got back on this crown molding. I'll be right back. Maple, hard wood. It comes pre-painted from the factory, right? We, uh, we paid for that. Hard wood. And you only have so many pieces. It came with four eight-foot pieces, eight or ten foot. I think they were eight. No, they were eight-foot pieces. So I didn't have a lot of, of ability to make errors in my cuts. I had very few opportunities to get this right without having to go back and order more. I didn't want that. Um, money's not the issue, the time is the issue. I made uh, like one, two, three, four, three or four cuts. I tried in this first corner here and it just wasn't coming out right. And every cut I did, I had to do back cutting to get it to close up. They weren't getting a full 90 degrees. I couldn't figure that out. They weren't getting these 45 degree angles. I couldn't figure that out and I was getting irritated. So the old me would have broken all the pieces, would have smashed the saw, <laughs> or would have kept cutting and, and screwing up pieces, and oh, it would have been the old me. Yeah, that wouldn't have been pretty. But the new me is smart enough to stop. I, the new me still gets irritated and angry, like the old me, but the new me is smarter as to how you channel that energy. So I stopped the finish stuff. That's when I did a dump run with the trailer because the trailer was full. Because I figured, well, that's just mindless grunt work, taking it to the dump, and uh, a trained monkey could do that. So, of course, I handled that task well. And then uh, I went home and, and I did some work on the trailer, did some welding and cutting. But the next day I came back in here and I, and I cleared my head and I said, all right, all right, you're stupid. Um, I know it's been a while since you've done crown molding and you're dumb. But go back to the basics, all right? When all else fails, just kind of clear the slate, go back to square one. Square one was what I was taught was you make a cheat sheet. Basically, you make a cheat sheet for your cuts, all right? You make an outside cut. Out, this is an outside 90. This is an inside 90. And this is an inside 45. And what you do is you go to Home Depot and or any big, big box store and you get finger jointed pine that runs about 99 cents a foot. Uh, it didn't have to be pre-primed, but it just happened to be. I don't like MDF because I just, I hate cutting that material, but um, finger jointed pine, this stuff's cheap. Go get five foot of it or so. Make some corners so you can set it down. This stuff here probably cost five bucks five to eight dollars a foot. I don't even know. It cost a lot. But like I said, money wasn't the issue on this. The issue is lead time on getting some new ones uh, painted up and delivered. I didn't want to deal with that. So by cutting these corners, by cutting corners, by cutting these corners, what it does is it gives me the opportunity to have a cheat sheet and I can lay it alongside the piece I'm currently cutting and say, okay, and I make notes. This is uh, to the right of the seam, right wherever the seam would be. This is this piece would be the right to the seam, 15, 15 are the angles, 15 bevel, 15 minor. Um, and then I know when I lay this down on the saw, am, am I going the right direction? I am. Okay, there's no errors. Okay, this one is to the right of the seam on, a, on an outside 90, 33 and 7 eighths on the bevel, 31 and 5 eighths on the miter. So I know which way the blade's got to come in. So that's first of all. And, and I used to have a set like this hanging around all the time. And then, I, and then a couple years back, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I don't need this. I was doing a lot of crown molding jobs. It was uh, just second nature. I knew in my head how that stuff went. But as I mentioned earlier, it's been probably a year, year and a half since I've done true crown molding. This is true crown molding, not the B1 block molding. That looks like crown molding, but it's more like square block. It's cheater stuff. Um, so I should have done this from the get-go, but I didn't. That was mistake number one. Mistake number two 
is the freaking blade, right? My, my, I'm thinking to myself, okay, step number two is you always start your crown. When I did crown a lot, I would always, always is a relative term, but I would always have a sharp blade. I wouldn't always replace the blade, but it would have to be a really sharp, new-ish blade. This is an 88 tooth, 12 inch DeWalt saw blade, and it's made for fine cutting. And when it was new, it was fantastic. But I was cutting this stuff, and the problem, the problem that I was having, and I didn't realize it at first, because sometimes I'm stubborn. Well, not sometimes, always I'm stubborn. And the problem that I noticed was that making these deep cuts, deep cuts such as these, where you're coming in at a really steep angle and you're going against these grains and um, as the blade would get hot and it would wander and my my angles were not accurate. You can see where it's burned and hell. Anyhow, so um, it finally dawned on me. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Make your cheat sheets and get a new blade because you always want a super sharp blade and I didn't have that. And this was a fantastic blade, 88 tooth, fantastic fine tooth blade for that chop saw back in the day. But then I thought about it and I was like, yeah, this one's got a lot of hours on it. Yeah, it's carbide tipped, but it's gone through some nails. Um, I'm sure it has. And it's gone through a lot of just kind of crappy wood and it's, it's seen a lot of hours. So I went and bit the bullet. I spent the 80 bucks on a nice 88 tooth uh, Diablo blade and that made all the difference. Um, it really did. It was it was going through here without any problem, without any wander, and all my angles came out right. So there's your lessons for the day. Cheat sheets and a sharp blade. And pay attention. <laughs> it's just... Ah, okay, so long and the short of it is, is we can call this done. Sparky's going to meet me here shortly. They're going to set all the plugs, and uh, we can call this one good. Now it's time to get the painter in here to do the to do the little bit of trim that's got to be done well when he does the whole house you know what I mean all right that's it kitchen is done that's it I'm not going to show any more videos on this because you guys get the idea all right gotta go gotta run see ya mm -hmm.